we're going to move on to lesson three. As we learned in Kwame's story, the biologists often use visual representation of sound, as they did with the elephant listening project. So I'm going to reread one of our pages. Technology is anything that people create to solve a problem. These recording units are my technology. They take measurements and tell us how loud or soft or high pitched or low pitched a sound is. Those measurements are translated into patterns that we call spectrograms. So when I said the word spectrogram, it's a really cool word to say. Do you want to say it? Spectrogram. So that is actually a pattern that represents visually what sound can look like. So we're going to be looking at that today and we're actually going to move out of where we were with the elephant listening project and we're going to move into listening to birds. So now I want you to close your eyes. And imagine you are deep in the rainforest with a field biologist when all of a sudden you hear the call of an endangered bird called the speckled bubble bird. The field biologist needs you to help find a way to remember the sound of the speckled bubble bird so that they can show it to others. I'm going to play what the speckled bubble bird sounds like. Speckled bubble bird alarm call. So what were you able to hear when you heard the endangered speckled bubble bird? Tell me, Sophie. Um, I, it, I heard it really low and then it got higher and then it, got, it was still high but it got a little bit lower and it was still high and then it got lower higher and then it pretty much stopped. Okay, so when we're saying lower and higher, let's put an actual name to that which we've been talking about, Lily. There were so much pitches. So different pitches, so many pitches, I love that. So the pitches were, Amy? It kind of sounded like if you're in an elevator, um, like if you pushed a button, then like the higher pitch would be like you're going up higher in the hotel. The lower pitch would be like you're going down. I love it. I love how you said that. How could you visually, just like Kwame had done in the story, visually represent the sound? On your desks, there are your whiteboards and different color markers. Now, as a team, you can talk about it, but each one of you will have a way that you are going to write down that representation. I'm going to play the bird call one more time. Let's see. Let's play it one more time. Now, I want to point out, there is no wrong or right way to actually visually describe it to someone as long as the person that you are showing it to understands what you are trying to get across. So even though everyone is going to come up with different ideas, which I absolutely love, there is no wrong or right way as long as the person who's seeing it knows what and can understand it and interpret what you are saying. So I'm going to have team one hold up your boards and can you explain how you did your calls? I thought it went low, medium, high, medium, low. And so each dot represented in your, it was almost like a graph, right? So going from lower down at the bottom to higher, which was closer to the top. Kennedy, do you want to show, share yours? I did low, medium, high, low, medium. I love it. Let's listen to it one more time and see if we can hear what everyone is visually writing down. Marcos, right then you were doing something with your hand. My hand was telling me like how high the pitch was. I love it. So Marcos just said his hand was telling him how high the pitch was. Do we all want to try that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have you guys erase that one because we're going to hear a different call. This is the speckled bird flight call. 
Now this is very different from the alarm call. So who can raise their hand and tell me what is the main difference between the two, the alarm call and the flight call? Amy? It's kind of like louder and then like quieter than louder. If, it, if Amy is saying it gets louder than quieter than louder, is that related to pitch so much? Ella, you're shaking your head. No? So what is it related to? Like the sound going higher and lower. So instead of it being higher and lower in pitch, it's higher and lower in sound, in sound or we could call that volume. Like just like turning up a radio or turning down a radio, it gets louder or it gets quieter. Um, when you were doing it, it sounded like it was medium the first time and then it sounded the same the top. It was sound like medium high, then high, then it got really lower. In the pitch or the volume? Um, the volume. How about we do this? Because I'm always playing with my radio in my car. And when I want to hear something, I turn the volume up. And when I want to talk to my kids, I turn the volume down. So everyone put your hand like you're holding a knob to a radio. And instead, like we did with the pitch, where we went like this to represent the pitch in the alarm call, we're going to represent the volume by either turning the volume up or turning the volume down. Now, how would you represent that on your whiteboard so someone could visually see that? Marcos, do you want to show everyone what you've come up with? Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's two in between um, a medium and low because it's kind of in between both of them. Okay. So that's what I did. Awesome. So you use dots to represent. So they're both in the middle because they're kind of low but kind of high. Okay. I love it. Izzy, what did you come up with? Um, I did the bigger, the louder. And it got louder. I love it. So you're using dots again, but your dots are getting bigger for where it's louder. Yeah. Sophie, would you change something? I actually think it's high, and then it's low, low, medium. Right, so how would you write that? I would probably, like, just write dots, and I would put a number next to it. Like, one number was representing medium. So you know like which steps it would go. I love it. I think that's a brilliant idea. Awesome. I know you guys all have awesome ideas, but right now I'm gonna ask that we wipe the whiteboard down. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna end lesson three today and tomorrow we're gonna pick up with lesson four. Great job, everyone. I was a little nervous. I have to admit, before, when I was listening to a model machine speckled bubble bird call, thinking, wow, they're just going to keep saying, but this isn't a real bird. But now, going through the unit, I realized that that was such a necessary part so that they could truly hear and identify the different parts of the call and the different pitches of the call. It was so important that they were able to identify it in lesson three, and then they had something to build upon in lesson four.